Hey guys, Matt Curie, back. I've been away for a week with a family up north. Um, back on deck, had a question last week though about Masters swimming and what's my take on it for triathletes, uh, friend or foe. So I'll share some of my thoughts. And look, I've got to come from an angle here and say, look, I'm not a massive fan. But it, it, number one, it also depends on um, on the type of workouts your coach is throwing down in a Masters workout too. They can they can vary a bit. But your typical Masters workout, which to me tends to lend itself more to an entertainment factor, or at least from a triathlete's viewpoint, and also towards um, more training of the anaerobic sort of systems as well, you know, more... Uh, more intensive sets, more lactate tolerance, more longer rest, interval, classic interval training at VO2, intense, VO2 max intensity and higher even. Um, but then I understand the angle of you guys, number one, being limited in pool space as well uh, to get lane space for yourselves to do your own sessions. And secondly, the mindset required to be able to put yourself through your own workouts. You know, the camaraderie factor is, is big in the pool. So, so I get that. I uh, totally understand that we all can't can't be capable of of getting in there on our own, even if we've got the lane space and putting ourselves through a, a set that, excuse me, or sessions that might be more appropriate for your development of triathlon swimming. So, you know, think about the master squads and a lot of the sets that go th- get thrown down and especially about the event durations that a lot of the swimmers, if, if the squad has a lot of pure swimmers in there and, and not triathletes, um, in which is the second sort of case, the sessions may be more tailored for what you need. If it's more swim focused, then a lot of those athletes are going to be training or being trained for events of, say, anywhere from 25 to 400 metres. If you're lucky, maybe 800 metres, but let's say 400 metre limit. Uh, so you look at the durations there of anywhere from, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 seconds through to four and a half minutes, six minutes, depending on the ability of the athlete. You can cross-reference that to running, can't you? And have a think about that. And you're looking at anywhere from around 100, 110 metres of running event through to a 1500. And you just think about the uh, anaerobic energy contribution to events of those those durations in running. Think about how anaerobic you are if you run a 1500 metres, which is, as I say, is a good proxy for a 400 in the pool. Uh, and you get the picture. Would you train as a 1500 metre track runner trains for triathlon would you be inclined to to do the the classic speed sort of sets that a 1500 meter runner does if you're training for triathlon would they be beneficial or not good questions so then you can look at that in the swimming um my you know my approach is more of a speed through uh endurance approach sets uh, we're coming from a bottom up uh, mindset rather than top down or lactate tolerance and I also think of we have one system you know so if you're going to strengthen one system say the anaerobic side of things it's always going to become going to come at the expense of a little bit of the other uh, and tr- for triathlon especially you definitely want to be uh, more aerobically strong I mean you can think of the Brownlee brothers and um, Brett Sutton would always tell me how, how slow those got, not slow, you know, compared to you or I, but comparatively slow those guys would be in a, in a 50 metre sprint or 100 metres, yet how by the first can, wherever that was, they'd, they'd find themselves coming into the mix and getting towards the front. <coughs> um, but yeah, aerobically those guys are just very strong and going fast on, on a low level of, lower level of lactate was, was what they're aiming to do in, in their training, pushing up that cruise speed and high end speed at uh, at aerobic paces and yeah sure my view there is that a lot of the masters and adult squads aren't so focused on that as as we might like as triathletes but i understand the predicament and i understand that the entertainment side of things is be a good thing and a stimulus to you guys it makes you want to go to the pool uh and train and do the workouts um I have a pro that I train and he say, you know, he's in a similar predicament in that he can't get the lane space that I'd really like to be able to do workouts that I might prefer him to be doing on some days of the week. So what do we do there? Well, yeah, I hope his coach isn't listening, but I actually tell him to bluff a little bit a lot of the time and to go to the back of the line to tell the coach that he's tired. Just so we're not hitting some of the super high lactates that might be um, targeted in those workouts that, you know, in my mind are counterproductive. 
uh, number one, not just in terms of the actual intensity of them, which is very often even well above VO2 max intensity. You know, you might be hitting your, your 200 meter race speeds um, or a proxy for say the 800 meter running, running distance race. Um, but also in the quantity of quality that's often served up in some of those sessions or sets. And, and that very much can depend on the coach you've got on deck and the quality of the coach and the knowledge of the coach in knowing what's enough to train a system properly and what's too much and is overloading and then lending itself to compromise and other systems, specifically uh, the aerobic side of things, uh, basic endurance or aerobic power or, or, you know, or similar. Um, so yeah, you know, that's just one tool we use a little bit to, to try to make sessions work for you. So I'd encourage you to do that if you can. You know, you're there, you're there to, to train, yes, to have fun, but to also improve your try swimming. So that's, that's one, um, one thing you can incorporate there. You know, a lot of the longer rest stuff in, in the master's workouts is, um, and done too often. It's, you know, it's fine to do a little bit of this stuff, I think, for sure. But, but it's the quantities, as I say, and the intensities and the number, the volume, the quantity of quantity. That you want to uh, that you want to sort of micromanage a little bit in your own way if you can in some of these sessions. Um, another thing you can do is at the weekend do a bit of an aerobic refresh session, as I like to call it. Just go out and just do a just do a long aerobic swim uh, to strengthen that aerobic side of things a little bit. Keep the intensity out, low heart rate, and just do some volume. Like either a big set of short intervals or non-stop, or just cruise open water with your friends. Um, the other thing you can do after sessions that have a bit of an anaerobic emphasis, if you have the time, it's quite helpful, is to add an extensive intensity, meaning easier, slash basic endurance um, tail to the back, to the end of the session. So whatever time, if you've got some time left, stay in the pool and, and do a swim off of sorts and extend the workout with the time you have with some basic endurance. You know, that could be nonstop, that could be some 400s or or 200s on short rest, but just add some aerobic volume at the back end. And what that can do is just um, reduce a little bit the strengthening of the anaerobic systems that you've just been training. So, you know, we, we could say kill it off a little bit. Um, and that's, an, that's another idea. So I'm probably missing a few things I wanted to touch on there. We can cover it in another one sometime. But um, yeah, there's my thoughts on that. Something to think about. I hope it's helpful. Cheers.